better for Jesus. Turn to your neighbor, say to your neighbor, the Lord is faithful. For the second time, and for the last time, let's pray together. Father, what a privilege to stand before you as people redeemed by the blood of of your son. We thank you today for the room you have made for us. We thank you for the house you have built for us. And like David, as individuals, each one of us declare from the depths of our hearts that who am I and what is my heart? That the Lord, at, a such, at such a time as this, should do this magnificent work with us. Not unto us, but unto you only. Be the honor, the majesty, the power, and the glory. Father, I pray that in these few moments, you will speak and minister to our hearts. That at the end, the honor and adoration will be unto you only. In the mighty name of Jesus, and God's people will shout and say, Amen. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 150, the last book of the Psalm, Psalm 150. In this Psalm, David prays and says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty art. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with love symbols. Praise him with clashing symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In these brief, brief moments, I want to share with us a short message that I have titled, Thanking God with our praises. A missing ingredient in our world today is the word thank you. And for us here at Trinity Baptist Church, in the light of all what God has done for us, thank you must come out of a heart that is overflowing. Here at TBC, at Oasis House, Tonlow, and also here in Croydon, it must be a way of life. You see, in the wisdom of God, the seven Jewish festivals were instituted to remind Israel each year of God's ongoing protection and provision. The Passover is to remind them how God in his grace caused the angel of death to pass over them. The Feast of Tabernacles is to remind them of how God himself will make a room for them in the future and also how God tabernacled with them in the desert. Unleavened bread reminds them of the need daily to confess their sins. You see, leaven stands for sin. Unleavened is cleanness. So unleavened bread reminds the children of Israel. Anytime they celebrate that feast, it reminds them of the need to confess their sins. The first fruits reminds them that God is the God of fertility and not idols or any other God. The Feast of Trumpets, as they blow and, and celebrate, reminds them of how around the walls of Jericho, God caused them to blow the trumpet for victory. Pentecost reminds them of a special meat offering, and atonement is a time of confession. 
Thanksgiving is so important to God. Our praises are so important to him that he told Israel to tell the children of Israel to tell the children of Israel that in Deuteronomy 8 and that, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. And in the 18th verse he says, and you shall remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to make wealth that he might establish his covenant with you. And we at TBC, we come to say, Abba Father, thank you. For it is him who has made room for us in the name of Jesus. So therefore, this morning, this afternoon, we come to say, Abba Father, thank you. For building us a sanctuary. For giving us a sanctuary in which your presence daily shall dwell. A sanctuary in which your power shall prevail. A sanctuary in which your provision shall be made known. For making room for us and our children. For giving us a house of prayer. For we know that any time we come here and pray, heaven will hearken to our cry. For giving us rest in the name of Jesus. For turning this house into a house of healing. For I know that in this place, every prayer we pray for healing will be answered in the name of Jesus. For turning away his house into a house of deliverance, a home of evangelism, a house of fruitfulness. The Lord will turn every barrenness into fruitfulness. Our children, our daughters will become fruitful in the name of Jesus. This will be a house of the word of God. Therefore, we come to say, Abba Father, thank you. The word that will come out of, the, of this pulpit will be so gracious that as it comes forth, it will accomplish anything for which it is sent to do in the name of Jesus. This will be a house of restoration. That is why we say, Abba Father, thank you. Anything that the enemy stole from you, it is coming back to you in a sevenfold in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe it, let me have a witness today. Yeah. Hallelujah. It will also be a house of revival. From this house, the fires of revival will be ignited. And the United Kingdom once again will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And that revival begins here in the name of Jesus. It will also be a house of opened heavens. Here in this house, the heavens shall be opened over us. There will be refreshing times from the presence of the Lord in this house in the name of Jesus. It will also be a home of transformation. Nobody will be a member of this house and remain the same. From deep within, the Holy Ghost that will work on the inside will manifest a change on the outside in the name of Jesus. Here, dreams shall be fulfilled. Any dream, destinies of our young men, they will rise up. Our daughters, our sons and daughters will rise up to fulfill their destinies in this house in the name of Jesus. They will rise up as the future leaders of this land. Members of parliament will come out of this house. Counselors will come out of this house. Accountants will come out of this house. Preachers will come out of this house. The hand of the Lord will be mighty over the saints in this house. And the Lord will mightily manifest himself in this house in the name of Jesus. We honor him that here our children, our sons and daughters will be discipled to become champion children. I didn't hear you. They will become champion children in the name of Jesus. And wherever the soles of their feet shall tread, they will possess it as an inheritance in the name of Jesus. We come to say, Abba Father, thank you for giving us a beautiful church. In the New Testament, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 3 that there was a church called Beautiful. And here in London, the Lord has given us a church called Beautiful in the name of Jesus. Therefore, from this beautiful church, may the apostles of faith be sent out. 
May the apostles of honor be sent out. May the word of the Lord that will come out of the saints of God be with fire in the name of Jesus. May the presence of the Lord be mightily visible here in this house in Jesus' name. You see, what separates humans from animals is the ability to say thank you. An animal eats and turns away. But when God does good to man, man turns back unlike the other lepers and come and say, Abba Father, thank you. We come to thank him for his deeds. Tell your neighbor, the Lord has been gracious to us. You see, amongst the best ways of saying, Abba Father, thank you, amongst the best ways of expressing our thanksgiving, three that stands out is worship, our praises, and also our giving to him. Because in worship relates to the holiness of God, we come and we say, there is no God likened unto you. We come and we say, he's a holy God. He alone is eternal. He has no beginning and he has no end. Praises relates to the character of God. We praise him for who he is. We praise him for his mighty acts. We praise him for his mighty deeds. We praise him for the spoken word that caused the universe to come to pass. We praise him for sustaining his creation with the power of his word in the name of Jesus. Therefore, today what we are saying is that halal to you, O God. And that word halal means to be boastful. And for us as a people of God, our boast is in the Lord. It is like your favorite team scoring the winning goal in the last 30 seconds of a match. Oh, my goodness. Yesterday, I was literally shaking when I was watching the semifinal between Chelsea and Tottenham. You, knew, you know what I did? I swim the telly off. No, no, the tension, I, I said to myself, why should I take myself through this tension? So I switched the telly off and went upstairs. And when I knew that at least we, by two minutes the match would be over, I came down, I turned off my telly. Guess what? Chelsea were leading 4-2. I jumped in my room and I shouted. You see, when God does something for you, that is what you do. And the Hebrew word for that is halal. You jump and you boast of the goodness of God and you say, my team Chelsea are the best. So what you say is that my God is the God of all gods. There is none likened unto him. And in our generation, he has visited us with goodness. Therefore, we come to say halal. Hallelujah. The good news is that as we come to say Abba Father, thank you, there are some things that praise does for us. Anytime you come before God to say thank you, not only does the heavens open unto you, but there are Things in the Bible that God promises he will do for you when you discover the secret of thanking him and praising him. The first is that your praise attracts the presence of the Lord. And we have begun after the dedication of this temple with praise and thanksgiving because in doing that, the presence of the Lord has come to dwell in this house. When Solomon dedicated the temple, the Bible declares that the glory of the Lord filled the temple so much so that the priests were unable to minister. May the presence of the Lord that makes all difference tabernacle in this house. 
I said, may the presence of the Lord that brings healing tabernacle in this house. May the presence of the Lord that restores and brings hope. Any time in our worship and in our praises, when you enter into this room, when you kneel on this altar and you pray, may heaven hearken unto you. May the presence of the Lord become visible over your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But you are holy and throned in the praises of Israel. It is the presence of the Lord that makes a difference. The Bible says that, and all that Joseph did, God made it prosper because the Lord was with him. And of David, the Bible tells us that there was a long war between the house of David and the house of Saul. But as the long war progressed, the Bible tells us that David grew stronger and stronger. And his house grew stronger and stronger as the house of Saul who sought to take his life, grew weaker and weaker. By virtue of coming to honor and to praise the Lord today, may your house grow stronger and stronger. May all that you do grow stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. But you see, another good thing about praising and thanking God is that it takes your focus back onto God. In this age, where all what we do is to take selfies, and put them on our Instagram, on our Facebook, and share. What praises does for us is that it takes that focus of us and puts that focus back on God. Hallelujah. It takes away from us, I did it. It was by my strength. I'm very clever. It is because of my wisdom. I did that. It takes all that focus away from us. And it puts that focus back on God. And as we praise him, God rises to visit us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But thirdly also, thanking and praising him saves us from complaining. The truth about life is that whichever way we look at it, there are times when we become negative. There are times when things are so hard that for many people, they have no other choice than to complain. But as you focus and worship him and give all the honor to him and give all the praises to him, every negativity and the spirit of complaining is taken away. Regardless of the things that will cause you to complain, as you have come to worship, may it be lifted off your shoulder in the name of Jesus. No wonder David says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Instead of complaining, I will remember the benefits of my God. The God who forgives us of our iniquities. The God who heals us of our diseases. The God who has redeemed our life from destruction and has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercy. No wonder David danced so much in the presence of the Lord. You see, and in our praise and thanksgiving, one of the things we do is to dance. And that is what our sisters and some of the strong men demonstrated today. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Dancing before the Lord is an expression of our appreciation to him. It is an expression of our thanksgiving, and it is also an expression of our honor to him as our king and lord. Psalm 149, 3, let them praise his name with a dance. Let them sing praises to him with a timbrel and with a harp. David danced so much before the Lord that his wife rebuked him. And by virtue of that rebuke, she remained barren till she passed on. Therefore, we come and we say that let the people of TPC praise you, O God. Let every member praise you for the good things you have done. Hallelujah. But thanking him also helps us to win personal battles. There are some battles that are corporate, but there are some battles that are personal. And you see, in the case of Hannah, when Phinehas 
Her rival mocked her by virtue of her barrenness. She knew that she had a higher cause. She knew that there was a God in heaven who was faithful. And instead of complaining and fighting with Phineas, she went to the house of the Lord to worship and to pray. And as she did, and put her request before the Lord in worship, praise, and prayer, the Lord visited her and gave her a son, Samuel, who stood up to become the answer for the spiritual hunger that was in Israel at the time. May the Lord cause our mothers to birth the Samuels that will bring revival back into the United Kingdom in the name of Jesus. Praising and thanking him also shows our total dependence on him. When we come to praise and to thank him, all what we are saying is that, Father, I have no other God but you. That I will serve no other God but you. That I will know no other God but you. For thou art the creator of the heavens, the earth, the seas, and everything that is in them. And thank you that I have come to know you. On the island of Patmos, Revelation 28 through to 9, when the angel of the Lord appeared to John, the Bible tells us that John bowed to worship him after the angel had given him all the revelation. But the angel of the Lord said to him, I am an apostle just like you, but worship God. And the essence of all what we have done today is to worship him and to depend on him alone in the name of Jesus. But praises also silences the devil. Nothing puts the devil to flight and to shame than our praises and our worship. You see, when we come before the Lord, as has happened here today, when, when, when Minister Jude led us, when, when Ruth led us, when, when my daughter led us, as heavy as she is, what the Lord did was to change the atmosphere. And, and, and in praises, what God does is that he silences the devil. Instead of complaining, learn the secret of jumping and dancing. At times, all what you have to do is in, your, in the corners of your own house, let your neighbors think you are crazy. Because people who know the hand and the favor of God, are crazy before God in worship. Oh, yesterday you should have been with me to see what I did in my hand. And all what that had happened was that my team had won a football match. But when this building was completed, and, 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 and Sam worked so hard, and uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, Sam, what's the name of the guy? Where are you, Sam? He went outside. When the control officer gave us the bill of the grace that passed us to use this building, oh my goodness. The joy that flowed out of my heart. The praise that came out of my heart. That in the midst of all these challenges, God has given us rest. And that he has made the dream a reality. And not only that, that also because of the hard work of his children, we have been given a clean bill to use this place in the name. You know, here it takes two or three people to say you can't use the building. And when they said, when they gave us the green light, oh. Praise and silence is the devil. So the Bible says that out of the mouth of babes, Psalm 8, 1 and 2, and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. The best way of silencing the enemy is to thank God and to praise him. There is something about praises and jumping. The, uh, the, the, the lady who was sacked from her work, they sacked her. They, she started, you see, there's something about Nigerians, you know. They sacked her, she started jubilating. 
Uh -uh. It confused the manager himself. And all those that were in the office said, no, 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 no. All what you have done is that you have only pushed me to enter into my next level of promotion and favor. Why? Because God always takes the old to establish the new. And understand that when one door closes, your king of kings and lord of lords holds the keys of David. And when he opens the door, no man can shut it. You know, at times when doors are being shut on you, see them as coming from the Lord. Instead of complaining, but begin to praise him and to know that a better door is ahead of you that will open in the name of Jesus. Praises overcomes heaviness and depression. As we praise God. The spirit of heaviness and depression is taken away. Isaiah 61, 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I pray this day may the Lord console all those who are weeping. May the Lord wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. Those who weep in the corners of their houses because of disappointment, because of frustrations, because of delayed promises and delayed dreams. May the Lord himself console you. May he give you beauty for ashes. And may he give you the oil of joy for your mourning. And may the Lord from today give you you see, the Bible says that there is a garment known as a garment of praise. And what that garment does is that it removes the spirit of heaviness. May the Lord clothe you today with the, with the garment of praise in Jesus' name. Two more and I'm finished. Thanksgiving and praises also cause God to inhibit our praises. Psalm 22 verse 3 says, But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of of Israel. You see, to inhibit simply in Hebrew means to sit or to reside in a place. And what the Bible is teaching us today is that when we praise God, God literally sits on top of our praises. May God arise. And when God arises, his enemies are scattered. May all gadgets that monitor you in the darkness, by virtue of your praise today, and your continual praises, may the Lord shatter their plans over your life in the name of Jesus. He alone is the Lord of Lords, and he is the King of Kings. But finally, praises causes God to fight for us. One of the amazing things that God does through praises is that he fights for us. And when Judah was attacked by Amnon, Moab, and Mansell, they lifted, 2 Chronicles 20, 21 to 22 says, they lifted an anthem of worship and praise. And as they began to sing, the Lord caused ambushments. And they started fighting against themselves. May all those who plan against you, may they begin to fight against themselves in the name of Jesus. May they know that you serve the living God. And that because you serve the living God, there is no weapon that the enemy will fashion against your life that shall prosper in the name of Jesus. I pray that may your thanksgiving and praise today ascend unto God as a living sacrifice. And may it begin to chart and open a new chapter in the realm of the spirit for you as a child of God in the name of Jesus. Let's bow down our heads at this time. Maybe you are here, and you are saying, I want all my sins to be forgiven. I want Jesus to come into my life, to be my personal Lord and my personal Savior. I want to be born again. I want you to know that in life, everybody has a past. But only Jesus can walk into the corridors of your past and forgive you. Understand, secondly, that in life, everybody needs a friend. A friend who will be so loyal 
Only Jesus knows the worst about your life and still loves you. Why? Because he does not see you as you are today, but he sees the potential that is in you and how you will become after he has finished with you. Therefore, today he says, come. And also he says, come, because only he holds your future. You are here this morning and you are saying, I want my past to be forgiven. I want to be born again. I need this friend who knows all the worst about me and still loves me. I want my future to be exactly as God had ordained it to be. If that is you, wherever you are seated, I want you to raise your hands. I want to pray with you. You are saying, I want Jesus. I want to be born again. I want him to be the Lord and the master of my life today. I need a friend. I want the Lord that will hold my future and order my steps for his glory. You are saying, I want my past to be forgiven. Wherever you are, raise your hands. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, my brother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anymore. You are saying, I want him to be the master and the Lord of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, with the hands lifted today, I honor you for your faithfulness. And I bless you that this will be the beginning of a new chapter. A new chapter of hope. A new chapter of your hope, faithfulness. A new chapter of your honor. A new chapter of your blessings. A new chapter of your grace. Let it come over your son. And let it overtake him. With the hands lifted, there will be people standing by you. They kindly follow them. They will have a quick word with you. And you will come and join us in the service. Come on. Somebody shout to the Lord. Come on. If that clap is for the Lord, then do it better. If it is for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords and those hands are yours, then put them together well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. An offering that says, Lord, we adore you. And I want to encourage all of us that one of the things that we all will do in this house is that we'll be loyal and faithful to our giving, to our stewardship, because we know that this is the doing of the Lord. And I pray that this morning in our giving, we will all be faithful, shall we pray. Eternal Father, this morning we honor